Hello, and welcome back to Righteous Talk, here with Prophet Taisha and Pastor Maurice Martin. We are here today to give you the daily bread, hallelujah, glory to God, and we would like to start off in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings and your protection. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, glory to your holy name, for your clothed in majesty and worthy to be praised. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the things that you are doing, the things you've done, and the things that you are yet to do in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we pray that this message will be an encouragement and an enlightenment to those viewers, Father God, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we pray for your will to be and righteous talk in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you, we love you, and we need you. And we Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray for your Holy Spirit to be the mouthpiece for this for this uh, daily bread today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, uh, the verse of the day is James 5, 14. So, um, Delegate for today is James 5, 14. 14. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So, minister, give us revelation. Well, it's... It's just like what she said in James 5 and 14. If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over you, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. If they have, any, if they have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Amen? Amen. So when it's talking about you know, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over you. Pray over him, anointing with oil. Why is the anointing with oil, you know, uh, a factor? Because when they use oil in the Old Testament, they didn't just use any old kind of oil. They used the olive oil. Amen. Because the olive oil is a symbolic, you know, sign of, you know, God's presence. Uh -huh. It was a, a, a symbolic sign, you know, of God's, it was used for healing. Amen. And it was also used to, you know, raise up, you know, and heal afflictions. Amen. And also used to anoint the, 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 the saved ones to, to protect them from the evil doors. The, uh, um, the adversary. To protect them from the adversary. And Hallelujah. the Amen. oil was also used to distinguish the righteous mm -hmm. from the ungodly. Okay. Now hold on a second. And I want to go to, because we missed you yesterday on um, Righteous Talk. We apologize for that. We had a very important uh, conference that we had to go to yesterday, which was Monday. Uh, today is Tuesday. Duh. <laughs> no laughter there. Laughter is good for the soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, but anyway, we want to also collaborate with the message today. Uh, James 5, verse... Verse 14. Verse 14. Now here, we're speaking on the verse of yesterday. We're giving you two deli flocks. We're giving you two deli breads. It's collaborating in the same way. So it's Jeremiah 17, 14. Verse 14, heal, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. Hallelujah, glory to God. Well, simple. You know, what did God say? He heal has me. healing in his what? Healing powers and healing in his holy wings. Hallelujah. In his wings. So I'm going to go over that again before I close this out right here with Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Thank Lord, you, and I will be healed. It's saying that. Heal me, and I will be healed. O Lord, heal me. See, we have been teaching on the, the three rims of prayer. Asking, seeking, and knocking at God's holiness for him to transpire and to for him to manifest these things in our lives and in your life too 
So Jeremiah 17, 14, verse 14, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. Now, saving, asking God to heal you, got to have faith. Just like Jesus stopped to heal the, the blind man. He said, let me try it again. The first, first time, he, what did he say? You see, see, see men as, as trees. As trees. So Jesus said, okay, let's try again. And as he was trying again, I believe that the man was building up the faith with inside of him. So therefore, he regained his, his sight. Amen. So heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Hallelujah. Keep the faith. Save me, O Lord, and I will be saved. Hallelujah. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. In Amen. The of time. Amen. Uh, for you are the one that I praise. For God is the one that we worship, that we give praise to, that we give the honor, that we give the glory to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it's all about calling upon the Lord and you shall be saved. It's all about having faith as, as, as little as a mustard seed. And when I say have faith, when God says have faith as little as a little mustard seed, he doesn't mean lack in your faith. Oh, I just needed just a little as a mustard seed. Come on now. Be realistic. You need to have some real faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Because Me. what is a mustard seed? A mustard seed is very, very small. Very, very small. So, you know, myself for, you know, uh, my, my, my personal relationship with God, I tell the Lord, Lord, you know my faith. You see my faith, Lord. And you know it is bigger than a mustard seed. That's so, right. I trust in the Lord, you know. And um, God will save us. God said when your enemies camp around you to try to chew you up, in this shall I be confident in the Lord. In this time shall I be confident in the Lord. When your enemies camp around you, Psalms 27, God shall save you. That's right. For the remission, repent for the remission of your sins. You shall call upon the Lord and be saved. And God said, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Glory Thank to you God. Jesus. You should be filled with, and then you, you, you should be filled with his spirit. And then wait upon him and he shall fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. With that of fire. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we're speaking on healing. We're speaking on saving. We're speaking on uh, save me, O oh Lord, and I will be saved. Heal me, O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. You know, so, you know, um, anointing oil is very, very important. And we use anointing oil ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And I mean, we see miraculous things. We get un speakable favor you know and it's not the oil itself it's a symbolic connection con point of contact point of contact with god and god's holy promises hallelujah amen and the bible it states that oil was poured poured on the prophets and and and, and on the 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 the, the mm -hmm. ones that the believers that was be, getting ready to be uh, raised up as king and to be uh, rulers and to be uh, set forth with the gospel. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. the, how did they do it, Pastor? They would take vials of oil and they would actually dump it on. They yes. didn't just you know yes. just put a little bit of oil. Yes. They dump them like you Thank know you like Jesus. they do at the uh, games. Yeah. You know like they win they throw a bucket of ice. That's yes. how they did the oil back then. That's just Amen. an example. Amen. Glory to God. So we're speaking here on um, if any of those if any around you sick call for the elders of the church. That means you call in the saints. You call in the the, the pastors. You call in the preachers, you call in the ministers, you call in the prophets, you call in the evangelists, you call in whoever God lays in front of you or puts in your mind to call in who is sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. And they shall come and lay hands on you and put oil on you and raise you up. God said, God does the raising up, but he says it in his holy word. What? Call for the elders of the church, and they shall raise you up. Amen? Because of the power of the Holy because Spirit. Because of the power of the Holy Spirit working within them. Hallelujah. 
Be careful who lays hands upon you. Be careful who you pray with. Be careful of those things. God said, be careful for nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. God said, be careful for nothing. And through all things, beloved, pray without cease. And pray with all prayer and supplications. And it is my experience that you do not only pray, you praise. You give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. You give the Lord an extreme, a crazy praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Faith is what moves those mountains. Faith is what God honors and loves to see in his people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, give us some revelation. Well, I'm going to give you some revelation where it's important to use, you know, God's anointing because in the book of Acts, it talks about, you know, there's a man, you know, who laid at the gate of beautiful. Mm -hmm. And he was expecting alms. Alms is, you know, back then, mm -hmm. you know, it was like given to the poor, you know, given to the ones yeah, that yeah. had a need. And, so, they, and they said, you know, they didn't even open the doors. That's right. They said, what we give you, we give you in the name of Jesus. And what happened? Be healed in the name of Jesus. And that man at the gate of beautiful got up and walked. Because he was unable to walk. What was the situation with him then, Pastor? Well, he was paralyzed. He, he was, you know, at the gate, you know. In his, in his ankles and his legs, he was unable to walk. But, you know, it's just like what the prophet said. Silver and gold. They looked at him. They said, look on us. Mm -hmm. Silver and gold, mm -hmm. we don't have it. Mm -hmm. But what we give you, we give, we give you, you in, in the name, name of Jesus. Of Jesus. And, and here's the important thing. It said, and immediately. It didn't say later. It, it said immediately. immediately he you know, he received this strength. And was able to get up and walk. That's and then, right. not only did he get up and walk. But he did something very important. Mm -hmm. He went up and he began to praise God wherever he went. Amen. That's why I said praise is important. Praise is important, you know. And we have to learn to praise God, you know, in season and out of season. Praise God through the good and through the bad, you know. Uh, I got two songs for you, you know. Uh, when I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt because I knew God would surely bring me out. I fell down on my knees and I said, Lord, help me, please. And I got up shouting Jesus for the victory. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. And there's another song. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing, oh, Lord. I will sing hallelujah, oh, Lord. For you are the soul of my provider. You provide for me. You know. And and there's a lot more to that song. You know, I'm kind of losing the thought of that song. But, you know, you are the source of my providence. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just that, you know, I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord. No matter what. God said, you know, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Come before the Lord with praise and thanksgiving. Well, arms, praise, and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. You know, so, you know, uh, because God, you know, will take us over the mountains. God will move those mountains. You know, God will move those evil doors out of the way for you. God will heal your body. God will take good care of you and your household and your children, you know. Lay hands upon your little ones and speak life over your little ones. Lay hands upon yourself and speak life upon yourself. Lay hands on things around you and speak life on them. Lay hands on those bills that those bills will be paid in full. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Prayer 
and all supplication with hope, nothing back from the Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. See, we are also teaching, you know, like I taught a sermon um, on the Sabbath, holy, the three rims of prayer. Jesus taught on the Sermon on the Mount, the three rims of prayer. There are three rims of prayer. Now, when I say rim, I mean R-E-A-L-M-S, not R-O-O-M. Because I have to spell it out for you because I have an accent and I'm from a different state. So I need you to understand me clearly. So, you know, uh, Jesus taught on the Sermon on the Mount when he was teaching. And he taught about the three rims of prayer. How to, how to tap in to God's promises. How to tap in to God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a difference in tapping into God's presence and a difference between tapping into God's promises. See, we tap into God's holy promises by holding them to his word, quote his scriptures, you know, and, 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 and holding on to these scriptures, you know, placing them in our hearts and in our minds, understand? And there's a difference of, you know, uh, tapping into the spiritual rim and the three spiritual rims that Jesus taught on the sermon on the mount was asking seeking and knocking for God does say ask and you shall what receive seek and you shall what Time. knock and Door what shall be open unto you amen so ask and you shall be given an answer. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. If you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Yeshua, God will do these three things for you. He will answer your prayers. He will give you what you are looking for. And he will open that door that no man can open nor shut. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Well... We're going to go out of um, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 1, verse 3 and 4, to go into agreement with what the prophet said. Now listen to this. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That we'll be able to comfort them which are in trouble. Mm -hmm. By the comfort where we ourselves are comforted of God. Mm -hmm. So for as the suffering of Christ abound in us, our consolation may abound by Christ. Mm -hmm. Whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and your salvation, mm -hmm. which is effectual for the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer, or whether it be comforted, is for your consolation and salvation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you think about what I'm saying is, God comfort, comfort gives us comfort in the time of tribulation. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Thy rod and thy staff what? Shall comfort thee. The Lord's our shepherd. And we shall not want. So when we think about these scriptures, if God be our shepherd, what does a shepherd do for the sheep? He, he tends to the sheep. That's right. He, he takes care the of the sheep. And he leads the way. That's he right. provides a way. Hey, God always got a ram in the bush for you. Amen, Pastor. Amen. God like always he, got a ram in the bush. Just like he did for Abraham. Amen. You know, Abraham was asked to take his son, Amen. You know, Isaac, uh -huh. to the altar. Come on now. And, but Abraham had enough faith, knew that Isaac was coming back. Either way, his son was coming back. <laughs> You know, so he had comfort right there right. in the Lord. That's right. He, he he had confidence in the Lord. He had comfort in the Lord. Why? Because God's word is too holy to come back void. You understand what I'm saying here? If God says it, then that's what it is. The word go is accomplished to do what? To go forth. And accomplish what it's sent forth to do. Amen. Amen. Because you know what? Think about this. We should trust God all the way back, believe in Christ Jesus. You know why? Because when God spoke his word in the beginning, 
And he said, let there be light. And he did it with what? A word. Mm -hmm. What happened? Light appeared. That's right. So think about this. How is it? It's impossible mm -hmm. for to serve a God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's going to lie because he can't lie because whatever you speak comes into He's too holy to lie. <laughs> it comes right into he's, existence. He's too holy to lie. Existence. You know, his word will never come back void. You know, if you are lined up in the word of God and God sees your faith and he knows your faith. See, God knows the heart of every man and woman. He knows how far you will go. He knows what your heart is. He knows what your heart is all about. So, God's word is too holy that it will never come back void. You understand me? What this holy word says shall be it. It is written. Just like Jesus on the cross on the day of his crucifixion. What did he say? It is finished. It is accomplished. The word is, ac is accomplished. It is finished. The word of God is written. God said don't add to it and don't take from it. Why? Because it's complete. Because it, it's accomplished It gives already. you the things that you need to know. Here's what a Christian really needs to know. They need to really know that they need to rely on God. For everything. For everything. And <laughs> leave the adversary alone. That's because right. you know, it is clear. John 10 and 10. The adversary, the thief, the I devil, the enemy, the serpent. It said, name. the thief comes not except to kill, steal, and to destroy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To mm -hmm. destroy. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Good news. Jesus comes that you have what? life and life more abundantly well so when he says more abundance he's not just talking about in heaven that's you right. can get abundance down here that's right here's why here on earth he that's said right. it is his desire god's desire mm -hmm. that you what prosper and be in good health Amen. Even as your soul Even prospers. as your soul prospers beloved so let's break it down how's your soul going to prosper a closer walk with thee. A closer walk with thee, but your soul can prosper by what? By the Bible. The Holy Bible. God Amen. speaks to you through the Holy Word. Do you, it's two ways to hear God's voice. You understand? That still small voice that is with inside of us, and God speaks to us through His Bible. As I said before, when I read my Bible, I'll be like, mm, yep, that's me. Mm. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm. Yep, that one was mine. That, that scripture right there, that's me. Mm. Yeah, Lord, I understand. See, the Bible, we hear from God that way too. You understand? That's why we need to have the word written in our hearts. And in our minds. Do you understand? And we ought to be renewed in our minds on a daily on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it is true. You hear the word of God through the Bible, but you know it also says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, like you said. But then if you go to the other parts, you know what it said? How can you hear without a preacher? Amen. How can you hear without a prophet? Amen. How can you hear, you know, without a person that, you know, be sent from God? Because they said they can't preach unless and they that's be right. Sick. But the Bible also says that the Bible, hey, even a fool can't err. Can't err in it. When you read the Bible. Even a fool can understand what the Bible is saying. Why? Because God is speaking through the Bible. But it also Do goes back to another scripture. You know, what you talked about the other day. That on your sermon, if you remember, everybody needs a prophet. True. Not, not a false prophet. <laughs> let me true, let me make that clear. Prophet. Not a false prophet. That's true, because you know what? <laughs> but a prophet of, of a true and living God. If a person <laughs> close to you cannot hear from God, maybe the situation that they're going through, or maybe just what it is, they need to hear a word from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And uh, sometimes, you know, and a lot of times, the word that you need to hear will come from the prophet, will come from the Lord through the prophet to you. 
You see, prophets relay messages. Prophets do a lot. Prophets, you know, they have visions. They have, they, 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 they hear from the Lord directly. They, 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 they know when the Lord is speaking. They and 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 they hearken to God's voice. You know, God said, "My my sheep know my voice. My my people hearken. They know my voice. They hearken unto me." You know, and you know, sometimes when a prophet prophesizes with the Lord, thus saith the Lord. A lot of people don't want to receive it because it's not always good news. But when it's good news, it's all it's all that, right? It's all, oh, what a happy day. It's all hunky-dory and glory and, you know, praise glory to God. But when a prophet comes to you with some news that you don't want to hear, sometimes they receive them not. And that's not a good thing. Because if you do hear news from a prophet... You need to be just like, um, who was it? Um, well, I know. No, it wasn't Eli. It I was, was going to uh, say Hezekiah. Hezekiah. Because I was trying to think of Hezekiah. You need to, if, 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 a pro, if God sends a prophet your way, and you don't like the news that you heard from the prophet, the message that God sent that prophet to you, you need to be like Hezekiah and fall to your face. Or, or, you know, go straight to the Lord. Hezekiah turned his face to shave his head, shaved his head, shaved his hair off, and turned his face to the wall and cried out to the Lord. And God turned it around for him. Sent the prophet back and told me you're going to have 15 more years unto his life because Amen. he lived a what? He lived a righteous life. So, so here's That's the right. thing. That's right. If you live a righteous but, life, God will bless you. But, and, and I agree. But, on the other hand, Eli, prophet, came to him and told him, God said, you better get your house in order. And he didn't get his house in order, meaning his church. You better get your church in order. Because his son was mingling with the, it, it, it was a mess. Was it was a mess. And he was too light on his children. Had no discipline, no structure. And God sent the prophet also to Eli and told Eli to get your house in order. He didn't get his house in order. Mm. Okay? He didn't do it the way God expected him to do. And it was an unfortunate and a terrible way of leaving the earth for, for Eli. Eli. Because um, he fell back me, and he broke for his neck. Eli. Because he fell back and he broke his neck. Because he did not hearken unto the Lord's voice. He did not obey what the prophet told him, thus saith the Lord. But Hezekiah. He did. He did. Well, and then if you really want to talk about how it ain't always good when a prophet comes to you. Now, let's look at this perfect example. David, a man after God's own heart. A man that feared the Lord. You know. To make a long story short, David tried to hide his sins. You know, because God had gave David wisdom. David tried to hide his sin. God sent the prophet to David, gave him a riddle, right? Told him what was going to happen. And then with the David said he's going to, you know, do this, do that type of punishment, you know, on the riddle of the prophet. And the prophet turned around and said, That man is you. And then the prophet also told David, because he did what he did. That the sword would never leave his house. You see? So it's important, just like what you said, to listen and to get your house in order if a prophet comes to you. Because, you know, if a prophet comes to you, man, with bad news, do like what David did. Even though you knew the punishment was going to come, what he did? He fell on this his is face. what you need to obtain. So. And this is what you need to maintain. No matter what is going on in your life. Don't you know prophets go through it too? Pastors go through it. People of God go through it. We have storms. We have tribulations. We have trial and error. You know. Uh, you know. We go through things that we don't want to go through. But you know what? The race is not given to the who? The swift or the strong. But it is given to who? He that endureth to the end. Amen. 
So we need to keep our faith in God. Keep our head to the hills from which cometh all of our help. And at your downtime, I don't mind as the devil's workshop. I bind the devil to the fire pit of hell in Christ Jesus' name. And your downtime, if you are feeling down and you are feeling out, I have been there. You got to get up. With every fiber in your being, you got to get up and you got to talk to the Lord. You got to get up and say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I know you're doing something. Because your word is too holy to come back void. Now, I know what you promised me, Lord, in your holy word. I know what this Bible saying. I know what the Bible said. And I know what just happened. I don't know what you're doing, God, but I know you're doing something. Because all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called for his purpose and for his glory. God's going to work it out. Hallelujah. Amen. God's going to work it out. If he did it before, he did it again. He'll do it again. God's going to work it out for your behalf, for my behalf, for our behalf. God's going to work it out no matter what the situation is. You know? So, you know, you think about things might not work out the way that you want them to work out. And sometimes you get beside yourself. You get angry. You got a right to get angry. But God said you got a right to get angry, but you ain't got the right to sin. So get angry, but sin not. Get angry, but sin not. You got a right to cry. God will capture all those tears in the bottle. You got a right to be sad sometimes. But in that sadness, you got to pray your way out of it. You got to sing praises unto the Lord. And you got to say again, Pastor, I see what it looked like. But I, it, it, I see what it is, but it ain't what it looked like. Why? Because many other afflictions are the righteous, but God. God promised to deliver us out of every Holy. affliction. And he promised, if you got foes, if you got enemies, you got people coming up against you, then you need to say, in this time, shall I be confident in the Lord. If you got people that is declaring war against you, they just declared war against God because God said those who are an enemy to me is an enemy to my God. God said whoever hates me hates my God. Amen. Whatever you do unto me, you do unto my God. Now if you declare war against me, you declare war against my God. Why? Because the battle ain't mine. The battle the don't Lord. belong to me. It belongs to the Lord. The battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, that's something because, and I'm going to be real with you because, you know, hey, we're, we, 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 in Christ Jesus, I ain't got nothing to hide. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be straight up with you. You know, uh, somebody declared war against me. And you know what I told them? I simply, I, I, I ain't even... I ain't even say it out loud. I, I can't remember if I said it out loud. If I did, I did. But if I didn't, I didn't. But I said it. And then when they declared war against me, I said, you know what? I just, I, I, I walked away and I said, well, this battle ain't mine. It belongs to the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. You just declared war with God. So God's going to come up. God's army is going to come up against that person. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So you come up against a righteous person. You come up against God's righteousness. God's going to come up against you. It doesn't even matter who you are. Because you can use the example for King David. He was God's righteousness, but he came up against God's anointing. God's other righteousness. God forgave him, but the sword never left his house. Mm -hmm. He had to pay for that. So, I tell you, beloved, no matter what you go through, and no matter who threatens you, fret not because of evil doors. 
for a little while, they should be cut off. They will be cut off from the earth. God promised you that in Psalms 37. Fret not because of evil doers who prospers in his own way, but for yet for a little while they shall perish. And whatever they do to the least one of mine, God thus saith the Lord, God says, it's better that they had a millstone tied around their neck and drowned in the depths of the Red Sea to touch or to harm or to come against the least one of mine. So I declare the Lord and I proclaim and I I, I, I claim the holy blood covenant, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Over all, situ over my situation, in Jesus' name. No weapons formed against me shall ever prosper. And any tongue that rise up against me shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. And nothing by any means shall harm me. Hallelujah, glory to God. We got the power. God gave us the power to bind every witch, to bind every demon, to bind principalities from on high. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And you don't have the right to hate the person, but you got the right to hate the evilness that's in that person. You understand? So, back to, you know, if any afflicted, there's many different kinds of afflictions. You could be afflicted with, you know, uh, some kind of conflict, you know, something that somebody's troubling you with, an, an evil door that tries to seek after you and chew you up. God said, then this is the time for you to be confident in the Lord. Hallelujah. And God shall raise your head above your enemies. Hallelujah. If there's any afflictions, other afflictions, you call for the elders, and you lay in. They shall come with oil and lay hands upon you. And if you are already an elder or a prophet or a pastor, you got the power to grab that oil yourself and anoint yourself with oil in the name of the Lord or Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And anoint th thyself in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible is clear. After you receive the Holy Ghost, you have power to lay hands on your what? On yourself. Just lay hands upon yourself. Speak life into yourself. Amen. Speak life upon your situation. Speak life. Because we are the light in the darkest time. And we are the light in the dark. And the unrighteous cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. You are in love with Jesus. You got many foes and many enemies. You got a lot of evil doors to hate you. So I say to you, beloved, be careful for nothing. Watch who you pray with. Watch your surroundings. Be aware of spiritual wickedness from high places. Bind them with shackles and chains to the fire pit of hell in Christ Jesus' holy name, and they shall flee from you. Salvation. The Greek word for salvation is sozu. Sozu blots out demons, blots out things that are not like God, blots out sins, and blots out, you know, things that are not of God. That's what your salvation is. Once you gain your salvation, you are now in Christ Jesus. You are now renewed in Christ Jesus. You are now not conformed to this world, but you are transformed in the renewing of your mind. Therefore, you have salvation. You have sozu. The Greek word sozu. That every demon got to flee. Every principality got to flee off of you. And it cannot be in, in your surroundings. Why? Because. The anointing and the Holy Spirit is in your presence. And to tap into God's presence is the three rooms of prayer. Asking, seeking, and knocking. That includes your prayers. That is in your prayers. That invites God into your presence. And God gives us 
that urge within us because he knows our strength and he knows our weakness. So God places the urge inside of us to praise him, to worship him, to read his word, to, be, to have a closer walk with thee. So, you know, sozu is salvation for your life. A Greek word for salvation in your life. You know, so, you know, and by you reading your Bible and then by you remembering the scriptures, you know, we know sometimes it's hard to continue to, to remember the scriptures, especially when you try to put it all in, in a popcorn ball, you know. Take one day at a time, put one foot in front of the other, you know. Remember scripture by scripture, you know. Uh, I can't tell you how to begin to read the Bible. Just do it as God leads you to. But we need, we need to know how to quote these scriptures in these certain situations. And we need to know how to pray to God in these certain situations. You know, because life is not always peaches and cream. But life is good. Why? Because we have life. And we have life more abundantly in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So you praise God in season and out of season. And you want God to be in your presence. You know, you want to be in the presence of the Lord. You want God to have his surrounding and his presence with you. Prayer, beloved. Prayer opens the door for God's presence to be in your atmosphere. Faith opens the door for God's Holy Spirit to be in your atmosphere. Prayer can put angels to flight for you. Amen? Well, just like what the scripture said. One could put 10,000 angels. Two. I mean, one could put 1,000 angels. Two could put 10,000 angels to flight. But you got to remember, it only takes one angel to destroy the whole other. It only takes one angel to get the job done. But two gathered in his name. Two, three gathered in his name. He's in the midst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So like you said, if one angel could put 10,000 to flight, imagine with three people touching and agreeing, how many angels can put be put to flight? And you got, people got to understand, look, it only took one angel to touch. Even when Jacob said, you know, I won't let you go to you. One angel. Should you bless my soul. Shrinked it, you know, caused him to have a limp. But he got his soul blessed. Amen. He got his soul blessed. Hallelujah. So, you know, remember. You don't fight up against the individual. It's a spiritual warfare. Be aware. Have those spiritual antennas up. And be aware of the adversary. God promises to rebuke the devourer for our sake. You got the power, if you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, to do as God, as God expects for you to do in the times of danger, in the times of trials, in the times of discomfort, in the times of uh, whatever it may be. God gives you the power. If you are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And just by calling on the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Because God knows the heart. God knows that who calls upon his name is sincere or not. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't need to go no further with that. You know, so get your anointing oil. Get yourself some anointing oil, you know. Um, and anoint yourself with oil. You know, and pray symbolically. Pray in the spiritual realm. Pray for God to symbolically anoint you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, glory to God. God shall fight your battles for you. Hallelujah. Amen. The battle belongeth to the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Avengers, vengeance belongeth to the Lord, thus saith the Lord. God said, I will be your avenger. 
God said, I will be your fortress. God said, I will be your, your refuge, your Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. He is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Even if you got to praise him, you know, with, with the, with the last fiber of your being, you know, and when I say that is when I say if you are so, you know, beside yourself, you know, you got to praise him. You got to cry out to him, beloved. God said, when you cry out, I have a father, I will, he said, I will come save you from your enemies. If you got to sing in the midst of that storm, praises unto the Lord, beloved, you sing praises unto the Lord in the middle of that storm. If you got to sing praises unto the Lord in the midst of your affliction, you praise. You praise him. You praise him. And most of all, you make sure you pray. Prayer is very important. That is your communication, your relationship, your personal relationship with the Lord. Amen, Pastor? Well, I tend to agree because you know what? When Paul and Peter were in prison, what did the whole church do? They prayed. And what happened? And they sang. And what happened to Peter and Paul? They got released And those prison. shackles fell, and the guards was frozen. They couldn't even move. See, yeah, this is what I'm saying. The guards couldn't even move from, the, from where their foot was. They were stuck right in the spot where they was. And those chains come falling off. But there's something very important. Something happened. We talked about angels. The angels came in and caused those chains to fall off. Amen. 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 Prayer works. That's just how it works, man. And you got to have faith. Got you got to have prison. faith. You I mean, that's amazing. Faith. You know what I'm saying? Don't you, you think that's you, amazing? That is amazing. That, that, that's just, you know, that's awesome. And I mean, God is an amazing God. And he is a real big God willing to do real big things. He is an amazing God willing to do amazing things, you know. So, you know, we say to you, beloved, no matter what the situation is, it may be bothersome. You know, you may hate it with a passion, you know. But you know what? You keep on praying. And you keep on praying. And you keep on crying out to the Lord. You keep on giving him the praise. Hallelujah. You praise him. You pray to him. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your faith. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Because God has us in the hollow of his holy hand. Don't worry about your foes and those evil doors. Because God said he is angry with the wicked every day. And he does not hear a sinner's prayer. He will not lend ear to an evil door. But he, hear, he hears the prayers of the righteous. He lendeth ear to the prayers of the righteous. The fervent friction prayers of the righteous shall avail much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you remember that, beloved. Take that with you. Fret not, for the evil door shall be cut off. And remember, get yourself saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, so that you can lay hands upon your situation and be healed. So that you can lay hands upon you and be saved by God. Because God is willing to heal you. God is willing to save you. God is willing to fight your battles. God is willing to do the omnipotent, awesome, wonderful thing for you. But you got to give it to him. And you got to trust him. You got to trust him. Amen, Pastor? Amen. Close us out. Well, I'm going to ask everybody, you know that you're going to close your eyes. And this, at this very moment, meditate on the Lord for your situation. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I come humbly before your throne of grace, Heavenly Father. Stretching my hand out. In the name of Jesus, for you to work every situation out for every person, Lord, that's viewing. To work every problem out for every person that's viewing. 
to do the supernatural impossible thing, Lord. When they think that is impossible, Lord, in the name of Jesus, show them that you are God Almighty. Fight our battles in the name of Jesus. Expose the wicked ones, Lord, that need to be exposed in the name of Jesus, God, that it may be revealed what needs to be revealed. In Jesus' name we pray. Blessings and protection over us. In Jesus' name. Amen. In this household, in Jesus' name, and over the viewers that are seeking out and reaching out for you, Father God, give them favor as well, Lord, for those who love you and are called for your purpose Thank and you glory. Jesus. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. We thank you so much for joining in here tonight with Righteous Talk. We pray that this has been an enhancement for you, an encouragement for you, and we pray that you keep your prayer life together with the Lord. That you keep your praises and your worship unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And put all your dependence in the Lord. Hallelujah. I depend on the Lord solely and wholeheartedly. With every fiber of my being. Well, everything that I am, I put all my trust in God. No matter what. Trust the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For it is better to trust the Lord than to not trust him at all. Amen. Amen. So we thank you for joining in with Righteous Talk. If you would like to be a live caller with Righteous Talk, give us a call at 814-695-1203. Uh, is, and go to the Righteous Talk department, and we will get you scheduled to be a live caller and to be, or to be, uh, have a live interview with Righteous Talk here on Righteous Talk Ministry. And we also are, we are on the radio station Fridays, hallelujah, tune in. Our, we will be putting up a new schedule for um, our, all of our programs, hallelujah, glory to God. And also, um, if you are in uh, the surrounding areas or in the area of Blair County and you need help with our food and clothing program, give us a call, 814-695-1203. Go to the bottom of the department and we will assist you there as God has enabled us to insist you and give into the and give in Jesus holy name. Now again we have a uh, uh, a new um, announcement for you. The bottom mile program has been changed to Jesus saves food and clothing program. Amen. It used to be the bottom mile food and clothing program, but it has been changed to Jesus saves food and clothing program. So uh, if you call and you get the about a mile program because we have not switched things up um, in the office here yet, we're working on it. Still go to the about a mile department and we will assist you there. Hallelujah, glory to God. If you need prayer, go to the prayer department. Hallelujah. If you'd like to give a donation, hallelujah, to help out with the food and clothing program, uh, give your generous donation. Um, go to the, call the office and go to the um, donation department, and we will assist you there. Uh, also, you can click on our channel here, About Us. Go to About Us, and it will take you directly to our secure donation button. Click on that donation button and give a generous donation to bless the Shun's Temple of Our Living God Ministry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we love you and we thank you for joining in tonight. We say unto you Godspeed and Shalom.